Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kremti News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome, everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. We want to get right to weather and Tom Sherry. That is you because you said it best. It is hot and it is only going to get hotter. Boy, we have dangerously hot temperatures today and for the remainder of this week. Take a look at this heat advisory in effect across most of eastern Washington, portions of north central Oregon as well. And that does include the Spokane area as temperatures are going to get to 100 degrees, maybe even over 100 degrees. And of course, fire danger is high down in the Blue Mountains and areas of uh, northeastern Oregon. You can see we've got that fire weather warning in effect through tomorrow at 10 p.m. And then a fire weather watch is in effect in the upper Columbia Basin. That area is shaded in yellow. That's also under a heat advisory. Again, temperatures in central Washington expected to get over 100 degrees tomorrow. My gosh, look at this right now. 93 degrees and we're not getting any relief with a breeze. The winds are calm as you can see. Uh, we'll look for an overnight low of 63 tonight. 98 is the expected high on Tuesday. So so again, many areas will actually get over the century mark, especially in the upper and lower Columbia Basin. We're looking ahead to the weekend when we finally see a nice cool down back to seasonal temperatures. Look for a high of 84 on Saturday and 87 on Sunday. Whitney, I'll have the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Tom. And of course, when things get this hot, we are constantly keeping an eye on fire conditions. Right now, crews are working to contain the still growing fire out near Nez Pelham. So today, the greenhouse fire is estimated at about 5,000 acres burned. Crews are working to complete the fire lines on the north and the east sides. Today and tomorrow, though, winds and as well as those high, high temperatures are expected to affect the fire growth. Crews working to strengthen the existing fire lines and then mop up in preparation for tomorrow's weather. The fire started last Thursday and they had did they did assume control on Saturday. Right now there are level two evacuations in place for certain areas around the fire. That means people need to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Tonight the fire is about 30% contained. The cause is still under investigation. Also today a fire burning near Malaga, which is south of Wenatchee, is 80% contained. The Colicum fire in Chelan County has now burned over 3,000 acres over the weekend. All level three evacuation notices were dropped down to level two. Uh, Kalakam, Kingsbury and Jump Off Road now under level two evacuation notices, and those level twos have also been lowered to level one for other areas, including Tarpiscan Road, Timberline Lane, Sharon Lane and Big Springs Ranch Road. So far, no homes have been damaged by this fire. lower the rate of positive tests. It indicates that we are doing enough testing. We're getting enough testing across the community. And that is again allowing us to make more informed decisions. Spokane County leaders and health officer Dr. Bob Lutz are reinforcing the message of the safe start plan. Dr. Lutz says the county has seen a growth of coronavirus cases since Memorial Day weekend. The doubling rate of coronavirus cases in the county is now at 20 days. When it comes to positive signs, though, Lutz says that mass compliance at retail businesses last week was up at 90%. He stressed the importance of following statewide mandates to prevent a further spread throughout the summer. It's really essential as we go through the remainder of the summer that we adhere to the updates to the Safe Start Plan to really help us have fewer, shorter, and safer interactions with people outside of our households. And when it comes to returning to the classroom, Mayor Nadine Woodward said it's going to take discipline to stabilize the health crisis and reopen the economy and schools. So far, there have been a couple of draft plans for school districts reopening. The Office of Superintendent hopes to have plans finalized this week or by early next week. And local food banks are saying there is an increased need for food as the forced closures and restrictions on many businesses during the pandemic has hurt people economically. Our Morgan Trow went to a food drive today that actually started due to the coronavirus. Hey, how are you doing today, sir? Doing good. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate the help. Make it a great day. Okay, you, you take care. The coronavirus pandemic has affected all of us in a way, but for people who were struggling with food insecurity before, the virus has hit them harder. But there's some help for them. People in the Spokane Valley community are coming together for a food drive. It's, well, it's a de just devastating uh, affair. Ed Funk donates whenever he can, and with the help of the Five Star Real Estate Group, he is able to give back every few weeks. 
when the economy all shut down back in March, we were just feeling so blessed that we were able to continue working while so many people weren't. So uh, we just wanted to do something to give back to the community. Five Star owner Cindy Kerrigan partners with Second Harvest Food Bank to host a drive in her parking lot. Second Harvest brings about 100 bags of food, and they are typically gone within an hour. The group accepts donations and distributes food all day. And if you look in the back of your pantry, you may be able to find some food that you forgot about. And canned goods are the best ones to donate because they have the longest shelf life. But for people like Ed, there's a stronger reason for giving back. Well, it's part of our uh, Christian duty to help people that are in need. And uh, I'm a Christian and I'm uh, glad to give to whatever I can to help everybody out. So. Everything is drive through so you can just bring your car around and hand your stuff to the employees. All the food donated and not taken goes immediately to Second Harvest to be distributed at their location. Morgan Trout, Krem 2 News. And the distribution just ended at 2.30, but organizers say they expect another food distribution coming up in the next few weeks. Well, with so many things still up in the air as far as what school is going to look like this fall, many parents are just wondering how they're going to balance work and also taking care of their kids, especially if their kids are not going to be going to school every single day. So that is especially true for Katie Lamson. She's a single mother of two twin boys in the fifth grade. The recent um, SPS plan would have her boys on an alternating schedule, which means they wouldn't go to school every day. And that schedule just does not align with her work schedule. I have to either quit my job, stay home and school my children or let them stay home and hope that they get schooled and learn a little bit. So she is just running out of options for childcare, trying to figure out what she's going to do once classes begin in the fall. However, they begin coming up new at five tonight. We're going to hear her concerns about how she can balance the cost of childcare with a different schedule and a full time job. Also happening today, the Central Valley School Board will discuss guidelines on how best to reopen in that district. After tonight's Board of Directors meeting, the leaders in the district will share their reopening plan then with the community. The district's website says plans will officially go online tomorrow and then be available through the month of August. The meeting is happening virtually tonight at 630 and we will be following that and we'll have the latest tonight on Creme 2 News at 10 and 11. All right, still to come tonight, more coronavirus aid may still be on the way. There are negotiations underway about whether Americans will actually get another round of $1,200 stimulus checks. So our Regina on is joining us now with more on the negotiations that are ongoing up in Washington's Capitol Hill. Regina. Yeah, good afternoon, Whitney. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says Republican leaders are set to roll out the next COVID-19 aid package very soon. He said there was a backing from the White House and he's optimistic the bill will eventually pass. As it stands right now, the GOP proposal would ensure unemployed workers get no more than 70% of the wages they made before losing their jobs. Republican leaders are opposed to the current $600 per week payments, which expires this week. The administration and the Senate Republicans are completely on the same page. Mark Meadows and I were up yesterday just working on technical issues in the drafts. And negotiations haven't even started with Democratic leaders, but there are areas where the two sides have agreed. Both sides agree on another round of $1,200 checks for most Americans and extending that eviction protection nationwide until the end of this year. Negotiations could take several weeks because there is opposition over how much money to spend on coronavirus testing, money for schools and money for state and local governments. In the meantime, National Secretary Advisor Robert O'Brien is now the latest Trump administration leader to test positive for the coronavirus. The White House says there is no risk, though, to the president at this time. Live here in the newsroom, Regina on Creme 2 News. 47 people were arrested in Seattle on Saturday after a riot broke out during protests. According to the police department, 59 officers were also injured. Protesters marched in support of Black Lives Matter movement and demanded that Seattle police be defunded by 50%. Federal agents were on standby, even with uh, opposition from Washington Governor Jay Inslee and other city leaders. Police declared the riot after uh, 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 the protest a riot after some protesters set fires and destroyed property. Authorities used tear gas, uh, tear gas and pepper spray, but Sunday things were more peaceful. Oh, 
many gathering outside the state capitol to pay their respects to Congressman John Lewis. This is in Washington, D.C. The motorcade carrying his body began his final journey through the city. It passed the Lincoln Memorial, where Lewis was the youngest speaker at the 1963 March on Washington. The hearse also traveled through the Black Lives Matter Plaza, where Lewis himself stood just one month before his death. The hearse then made a final stop at the U.S. Capitol, where he was welcomed by his colleagues. It is an official, personal, and very sad honor to welcome our colleague, John Lewis, back to the Capitol to welcome his family and his many friends to acknowledge his sacred life. History only bent toward what's right because people like John paid the price to help bend it. Lewis will lie in state at the Capitol today and tomorrow. Then on Thursday, his body will be flown to Atlanta for a funeral service in that city.